We went to high school together, so I have a lot of history with my 26-year-old sister-in-law, Steffi. She was a significant bully, and since she could, I was one of her favorite targets. In high school, I was a giant nerd. Let me briefly introduce myself. I am Emma, a wonderful soul navigating through life's twists and turns with resilience and determination. My appearance surely did not assist my situation. My braces, the misery of my life, kept me extremely thin. I felt like the typical nerdy girl in a movie about high school when they got ready after taking off their spectacles. However, in my case, I had to get my braces taken off instead of my glasses. Regretfully, I didn't undergo my metamorphosis till I was a college student. Fortunately, I've gained a lot of weight and had my braces taken out before starting college, so I look much better today. Not that there was anything wrong with my appearance before, but as of right now, I'm just far less likely to be teased by others. In any case, when I was in my third year of college, I went to a party on campus, and that's how I met my husband, David, a few years ago. He was the DJ there. That was his former part-time job. He was three years older than me. I got wasted at that party, so it was meant to be. I was driving home from my apartment, and he offered to take me home. I was so inebriated that no one was prepared to take me home. He took me home with such grace. He liked me so much that he even wrote his phone number on the back of my palm and told me I may call him. Even though I had a horrible hangover the following morning, I knew I had found a fantastic guy. That was it. I called him and asked him to go on a date. On our very first date, we clicked so beautifully that I knew I had found the one. That being said, the only thing that bothered me was his sister as we connected right away when he told me about his family during our first date. He mentioned to me that Steffi was his sister. He then told me, grave looking, that it might have been his sister because she did have some behavioral issues in school when I laughed about how I had a bully in high school with the same name. We concluded that his sister was, in fact, my high school bully when he revealed to me the name of the high school she attended. Even though it was uncomfortable, I wasn't going to let it stand in the way of our plans. He agreed when I told him it wasn't a huge deal because I liked him and not his sister, and she wasn't involved in any of this. We decided to introduce each other to our families after three months of dating. I introduced him to my family quite quickly, but he found it challenging and unpleasant, knowing that my connection with his sister was not the best. I was somewhat anxious when I had supper with his family for the first time, primarily because of Steffi. It went well, though. While Steffi was distant and chilly, his parents' warmth and kindness were nonetheless preferable to her treatment of me in high school. The fact that this new version of her is so much easier to cope with makes me genuinely prefer her. We didn't communicate much and didn't spend much time together, but I saw that as a positive because it meant I wouldn't have to talk to her and we could ignore one another. That's how things have been with us for the past couple of years, so I consider myself somewhat lucky. She hasn't shown any desire to be friends with me, and I haven't had to deal with her very often. She spoke to me only as much as was asked of her, even after David and I were married two years ago. I am, therefore, not at all close to her. Neither of us would want it any other way since I don't want to be friends with someone like her after the way she treated me in high school. David doesn't seem to be bothered by this either, as he understands how cruel his sister can be and doesn't find it bothersome that the two of us don't communicate. He is aware that I have not forgiven her for the way she destroyed my high school experience since she has never expressed regret to me. I find it difficult to forgive someone who is not even depressed, and he respects that. But like most other people, he and Steffi share a regular sibling connection. That doesn't bother me since I am content with the fact that he does not see Steffi the same way I do. In addition, a great deal of time has passed since high school graduation. Now that my sister and I are on good terms again, I don't want to tell my husband to stop talking to her and start making a big deal out of nothing. So, all is well in the family. And to be honest, I got used to it. When Steffi contacted me a few weeks ago to ask whether I would be interested in going on her bachelorette vacation to the Greek islands, I was utterly taken aback. She invited me over for lunch rather than just making a casual phone inquiry. David was the one who encouraged me to give it a shot despite my first misgivings. It was during our lunch date that she made the request. She was pleasant with me over that meal, and even after that, instead of acting as though our past was unimportant, she eventually apologized and acknowledged it. I was shocked since I never thought Steffi would recognize that throughout our time together in high school, she had bullied me severely. 
When it finally happened, I was utterly at a loss for how to respond. She expressed her regret to me for how she had treated me at the time, calling me a spoiled brat who had discovered her error far too late. She added that she felt uncomfortable bringing up old memories and did not know how to confront me after everything she had put me through when we were teenagers, which was why she had never addressed her behavior, even after I began dating her brother. She even started crying as she was talking about all of these things to make it seem more accurate, and I, being the naive, emotional idiot that I am, fell head over heels for it all. Since we were all adults here, I informed her that I had forgiven her, that it was all in the past, and that I no longer had any problems with her. We could handle it the way we were supposed to, share a few drinks, and go on. We concluded our lunch on a positive note, and she appeared pleased about it. In an attempt to make up for a missed time, she asked me to accompany her on her bachelorette vacation to the islands with her pals. Gave me the impression that we were friends. Initially, at first, I was trying to decide whether to accept Steffi's invitation. Nevertheless, she persuaded me to do it. In the end, I consented since it would be enjoyable and might help me get to know her better. Every time we were in the same room, there was tension between us, and I was sick of it. I gave it a lot of thought before deciding to say yes since I was ready to put the past behind us and start our relationship over. We decided to take a trip and let our hair down as the best approach to handle it. I kept in contact with Steffi after that, which was a few weeks ago. We were meant to travel for the trip at the beginning of this week. She was getting married next month, but it didn't happen because of a small prank she chose to carry out at the airport. We were all chatting when we got there, approximately an hour before our flight was supposed to take off. Stevie then asked me to grab coffee when she stated she wanted to. I informed her I would be bringing cash for trinkets and souvenirs while we were at the counter, and she remarked breezily, Oh, by the way, I hope all your cards work internationally because otherwise, you'll have a difficult time paying for stuff. However, she then delivered the bombshell. She wanted me to cover all expenses, including airfare, lodging, and meals. Since I had the most significant wage she was aware of, she believed I would cover the total cost of the vacation. We'd never talked about it, and I'd never consented to any of it, but she said it was the most obvious thing in the world. When I questioned whether she was genuine, she said that she had anticipated that I would pay for everyone's travel expenses. I could think of several reasons why this was not appropriate. First off, I never consented to any of this. And secondly, I was only acquainted with a small portion of the trip participants. I wasn't going to spend this money on a holiday for a group of strangers because it was my money and my decision. I stood there for a bit before making the discreet decision to walk away. I didn't think I needed to explain when Steffi came after me, and her pals tried to ask me what was wrong. I found the first taxi I could locate and blocked Steffi's number to prevent her from getting in touch with me. When I got home, I contacted David and told him what had happened. Outraged, he called his parents right away to discuss the situation. Though he had higher hopes for his sister than I had, he was considerably more disappointed in her behavior. For the remainder of the day, I heard nothing from any member of his family. I chatted with my in-laws for two days after that. They expressed regret for how Steffi had behaved, but I told them it wasn't their fault. I knew David had been well raised by them. After the incident, David and I swiftly returned to our regular lives. I didn't inquire about any repercussions for Steffi because I no longer wanted to contact her. But two days later, I learned that her fiancé had broken up with her and that the wedding had been called off. What she'd done to me seemed to have an indirect effect on it. David informed me that Steffi was blaming our family for her and her fiancé's breakup when we got home from work that day. We hadn't spoken to her since the incident at the airport, so I was perplexed. It seems that when David informed his parents about Steffi's attempted action, they contacted her and requested that she issue an apology to me. Instead, she proceeded to accuse them of being stingy and impolite. Her parents, furious, informed her that they would no longer be covering the cost of the wedding. She tried to seem as if nothing was wrong, but it was evident that this had thrown her into disarray. She had recently resigned from her job to establish her own business. Therefore, she wasn't able to pay all the bills herself, with the wedding being only a few weeks away. David informed me that following her chat with her parents, she decided to tell her fiancé that her parents would no longer be paying for the wedding. They got into a heated argument because she thought he would take command. With only a few weeks till the wedding, it was undoubtedly unreasonable of her to surprise him. Thus, 
The reason the wedding was called off was because of their altercation. After David told me the entire tale, I questioned him about how he had discovered it. He informed me that Emily showed up at their parents' place and got into a confrontation with them as well, following the altercation with her fiancé. She had been placing the blame for what occurred on both of us, mostly just on me, which I find unjust given that I had no involvement at all in this circumstance. She claimed that I was the reason she had to postpone her trip with her pals in the first place since I wouldn't pay. She didn't see any other way out of this, so she was going to have to call off her entire wedding, and her fiancé was probably going to end their relationship. I have the tiniest disagreement with the trip because there was no discussion at all about my having to pay for anything. She was foolish to expect anything from me, therefore. However, I regret that her wedding is being called off. I think I shouldn't have been so agitated about the whole issue and shouldn't have complained to my husband. I suppose the reason I feel sorry for her is that I know she was eager to get married. First and foremost, I appreciate you informing me that this is not my fault. That was just what I needed to hear. The fact that Steffi had been posting depressing things about feeling betrayed didn't help my awful mood. I have blocked her everywhere. But even after the five days following the airport event, I am positive that she has been posting strange and depressing statements to gain attention. Additionally, she pretends to be the victim and gives her version of the story to anyone who questions her about it. I no longer feel guilty about her wedding being called off because it's apparent that she would do all in her power to paint me as the antagonist in her tale. I also don't have to feel sorry for her. She's even gone so far as to tell people that although she had anticipated that I would stab her in the back, she never imagined that her brother would support or put up with this kind of behavior. She was mistaken though, and her brother gave a damn about how she felt. I should stress once again how she had never once asked if I was comfortable or willing to cover her and her friend's travel expenditures. It was, therefore, her responsibility to cancel at the last minute and return from the airport. However, according to her account, we had this conversation multiple times. Even so, I lost it at the airport and made the decision to storm out, which was a massive insult to her since it meant she and her companions would have to return home. It was uncomfortable, and the excursion never took place. She has been spreading these lies about me and it irritates me. However, since it appeared so strange to me, I'm glad that the majority of the relatives she's been saying this to have gotten in touch with me to inquire about it. I explained myself and gave them my side of the story. And most people have accepted me as accurate. She is, therefore, coming across as a complete liar and an imbecile, and whatever she is attempting to accomplish is failing. David told me he wanted to talk to her, that she couldn't just keep lying to others about us. However, I informed him that since what she was doing was ineffective, he didn't need to speak to her at all. And she's simply doing it to herself, not to harm our reputation. We can just let her continue then. Are you enjoying the story so far? Show your support by liking and subscribing to our channel. Now, let's dive back into the story. Approximately two weeks have passed since we discovered that Steffi would not be getting married. She had been disparaging us to all of her family members, but it had no effect because most of them did not believe her and came to me for verification. After a few days, everyone recognized the truth that I had told them. Therefore, it was pointless for her to attempt to paint us as the villains. She stopped as a result. We assumed that would be the end of the story, but it seems that there is still more to it because she has since moved in with her parents after her fiancé split up, leaving her with nowhere else to go. A nice guy, her fiancé, offered to give her the flat so he could move out. She decided to move out and live with her parents as she could not afford the rent on her own. It strikes David and me as particularly ironic that she spoke up so much after her parents informed her that they would not be paying for her wedding. She had acted as though she had everything all out. However, at this point in her life, her parents were the only ones she could turn to. And despite all of her unpleasant behavior, my in-laws were gracious enough to take her in. But since she's moved in with them, I suppose she ought to have known better than to keep bringing up David and me, if only in front of her parents, who also happened to be David's parents. She truly is one of the dumbest people I have ever met, though, as she continued to act as though we were the bad guys and talk trash about us in front of my in-laws, despite their repeated warnings that she was not permitted to do so. Consequently, my in-laws decided to forbid her from living with them in the future, and instead gave her the option to admit her error and make an effort to change. 
This infuriated her since she started messaging David to remind him daily that I did more than sabotage her bachelorette party and wedding. However, her fiancé dumped her, and I have also damaged her life because of it. Her parents continue to support me as though I'm to blame for any of it. She is family, so he hasn't blocked her yet, but she's in a precarious situation right now. A few more texts are against me in a code. I'm pretty confident David will physically come to his parents' house and give her a lesson. Although it's inappropriate, I'm pretty sure she's simply doing this to agitate us or let out her anger. We did it. And after that, I was at my wit's end because she was going too far and contacting David with the worst things to say about me. She even believed that we wouldn't actively attempt to avenge her, so she anticipated to get away with it. Sadly, though, we are not that kind to her. She'd called me all the names in the book and said things like insecure and jealous. I had even flat out lied when I declared that I didn't look much better than I did in high school. She makes it a point to criticize my appearance whenever she has the chance because she is aware of how sensitive I am to it. Additionally, it has became clear at this point. Furthermore, I find it incomprehensible that she believes that I would be envious of her, given how much better my life is at the moment than hers. She genuinely possesses nothing about which I may feel jealous or uneasy. Nevertheless, she had been texting David these things to enrage us. She was successful in doing so because we challenged her earlier this evening at my in-law's place, because she needed to stop thinking that she could say and do anything she wanted. Then, we would consistently let her get away with it. Since we had already met with David's parents, they were aware of our purpose and asked us a few questions before allowing us in. Stevie was seated in the living area. She asked her parents why we were there, acting as though we weren't supposed to be there and that she was the only one who was permitted to visit them. She looked shocked to see us. I took over the conversation and informed her that I had had enough of her nonsense and that she needed to learn how to keep her mouth shut. They have yet to respond. I would no longer put up with her always talking bad about me. She therefore had to stop mentioning me to anyone. Should she fail to comply, I would ensure that my version of events was also made public, which would not be suitable for her. When I told her to keep quiet and just apologize for everything, she instantly became distraught and accused me of blackmailing her and ambushing her family. She informed us that she would not comply, began packing, and left in less than an hour, knowing that she would be living with a friend and that she was no longer wanted there. No friend will let her live with them freely or for free, so I'm hopeful that she'll return in a few weeks. Furthermore, given how miserly she is, I seriously doubt that she will cough up anything in exchange for the opportunity to live for free with her parents again. However, as of right now, she is no longer with us, and I am in a much better place. And when I say that, everyone would agree. Thanks for watching. How did you find the story? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome stories like this. Your feedback and support mean a lot.